Good morning. My name is Mary Beth Smith, Director of Market Development at PCTEL. And on behalf of the PCTEL team, I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, Optimizing Wireless Connectivity for Challenging Environments. Precision agriculture, construction, and mining offer some of the most challenging environments for wireless communication. Specifically in precision agriculture, emerging technology is causing a much needed shift and focus on farming practices, such as optimizing crop yields, and many experts believe that precision agriculture holds the key to satisfying the global need for food and resources, ultimately helping to alleviate food insecurity through smarter, automated farm management. Construction and mining are undergoing significant changes by adopting automation, such as autonomous vehicles, digital sensors, data analytics, connected machines, all for improving worker safety, maximizing fleet uptime, and reducing cost. Today's webinar will cover how we at PCTEL are helping to address the market trends to ensure that you are prepared with the best solutions. I'd like to introduce Chintan Fafadia, Vice President at PCTEL. Chintan has over 13 years with PCTEL with a background in RF technology, experience in 4G and 5G, Wi-Fi and IoT devices. He will walk through use cases and product solutions. We'd also like to address questions at the end, so please enter your questions in the chat. And also we will make this presentation available on pctel.com following the presentation today. Chintan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mary Beth, and good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good evening uh, every, to everyone on the call today and where, whatever part of the world you are in. Thank you for joining our webinar today. And as uh, Mary Beth noted down accurately that wireless technology in today's world is paramount. If you think about wireless technologies from a consumer point of view, we are connected to so many devices in our homes, in our offices and it's ubiquitous to us we don't even think about it that how we are connected and if we start counting we would be having anywhere between 25 to 30 devices in our homes that are connected to our wi-fi or our cellular communications but that is the consumer market if you take it out and uh, extrapolate the needs for wireless communication in industries like agriculture construction mining it is very very important to have good coverage good connectivity because it not only is required for improving efficiency productivity but it's paramount to safety so what we'll do today is uh, we'll walk through the why what are the drivers for wireless connectivity in smart precision agriculture or digital agriculture as it's called when construction mining then we'll discuss some of the wireless connectivity use cases. And finally, we'll uh, talk about how we optimize this wireless connectivity using PCTEL solutions. The, the intent and the agenda for this webinar is to share our knowledge, our experiences with the, with the people on the call and all the other teams so that you can make the right decision, the right choice when it comes to deciding how you want to provide wireless connectivity in this type of environment where you're trying to improve uh, your productivity or efficiency or improve sustainability. So with that, let, let's think about what are the real drivers for why do we need wireless connectivity in, in these fields? Uh, as Mary Beth pointed out that to solve the world food problem, Digital farming or farm farming itself needs to improve so that we can improve efficiency and uh, enhance productivity on how we can feed the world. It is required for that. But if you take farming apart, if you then look at construction and mining, in those cases as well, day-to-day -day use cases require more enhanced productivity and efficiency. So that is the one strong pillar why you need wireless connectivity because Connecting all your devices, your human resources, and making intelligent decision makes things faster, makes things easier, makes things better, makes things much more productive in the long run. And this helps in improving sustainability. How does this help in improving sustainability? If you are able to better manage your machines, if you are able to better manage your 
uh, equipment in the field and are able to control them and use them in an efficient manner, it not only reduces the uh, the carbon footprint of these machines on the environment, but it also helps in the long run in improving the machine sustainability, uh, which reduces uh, issues with uh, recycling. It improves the carbon footprint and helps improving long-term sustainability. And the third and the most important point is safety. Safety is essential for every environment that we deal in. If you're talking about construction and mining, you have so many human resources at the sites uh, that safety is paramount. Even in agriculture, as agriculture is expanding, you're not only about looking about safety from a human life point of view, but with equipment talking to each other, safety of the farms. And once we start having technologies which are moving in the direction of V2X, where we are talking about having intercommunications between road vehicles and agriculture vehicles, you need safety as one of the use cases in those type of environments as well. So whenever we are thinking about why wireless is important in this industries, it's a combination of these three things. It's your enhanced productivity and efficiency, it's improved sustainability and then safety. So now uh, let's start digging into each of this industry a little bit more in depth and start looking at what's driving technology in those particular industries. So if you look at agriculture itself, it's not that we are looking at improving technology in agriculture today. It all started in the 90s uh, and it started with modern farming management concept like using digital techniques to monitor and optimize agriculture production. So started in the 90s with in the early 2000s with technologies like GPS technologies, telematics that were built into the tractors that were help in identifying any issues going on with the equipment itself and also managing and tracking the equipment as they're in the farms, as they're in the fields. So at that point, the objective was make it more accurate, make it more efficient and control the farming. But then it evolved as we moved into uh, the late 20, uh, 2000s in the early 2010s, we started looking at smart farming. What does smart farming do? It applies all the information that we get from telematics, the GPS, all the data technologies to optimize this complex farming systems. You need so many different inputs to go in. So you might have sensors in your farms, in your fields, which is looking at the water temperature, which is looking at the humidity levels in your soil. What is the right time to go and uh, uh, put sprayers or put uh, seedings? So it helps combine all this data and combined from precision farming, it evolved to smart farming. And now we are in the age where we are talking about digital farming, which is a combination of precision and smart farming coming together. So it's not only are you using all this data, but you're now automatically completing the loop and controlling things. It integrates all this intelligent networks and data management tools that we have today to produce the best efficiency and productivity that we can think about in farming. So. There are three different technologies that we all hear about when it comes to farming, uh, precision, smart, and digital, but it's, it's an evolution of farming and digital is where it, everything comes together in farming. And if you think about wireless connectivity, it's required in each one of them. Precision farming started with GPS technologies, which is a form of wireless technologies. Then smart farming, we started using existing infrastructure, existing networks. And now with digital farming, our needs for wireless connectivity have gone up, not only in terms of coverage, but in terms of the, the amount of data that we want to transmit on this, uh, this wireless networks has gone up tremendously. So all this makes it paramount that your wireless connectivity in the field is right, is optimized. And that's why we have to focus on that and make it a key decision while we, when we are implementing technology in farming. So when you think about a connected farm, you know, the farm sizes in the US, the average farm size in the US right now is around 445 acres. If you think about it, that's pretty big, but that is not the biggest farm that you have. I mean, the biggest farm in the world is around 22.5 million acres in China. And countries like Brazil have farms that are like half a million acre big. Now, when you think about the amount of space that you have to cover, the amount of equipment that needs to be connected and talking to each other in these huge 
settings, environments, you start thinking about how do you provide connectivity to that. In fact, in 2018, the US government passed a bill on looking at broadband connectivity for rural farm sites because they know that it's not adequate. How can we add more connectivity to it? So the solutions to it, there are multiple technology solutions that exist today. If you think about technologies like satellite technologies, which have been used for GPS initially, now are being used for data. Uh, you have uh, the evolution of the cellular technology that has gone from 3G to 4G and now 5G. Uh, 5G on the lower sub 6 gigahertz band can provide more connectivity. Uh, 4G can provide connectivity in certain environments where you need it because it is the sub 1 gigahertz bands that sometimes 4G uses and 5G uses some of those bands as well. Wi-Fi is a very strong technology that when you think about it creating uh, internal mesh networks because Think about the amount of vehicles, the amount of uh, data that you're transmitting. So you have farm vehicles which are using GPS and machine to machine communications between amount of vehicles that could be tractors, combiners, plows, and many tractors working together and working with all this implements on them. So it, imagine amount of communication that needs and the precision that is required for this to communicate then you're communicating back to the farm offices you're kind of communicating to the silos you have sensors deployed across the farm all this data needs to be brought back some of them might not be required to bought uh, to be brought back to a central location but some of them requires to be brought back to a central location so combine all this and the amount of data points and the data volume that comes out of this field is huge and the the requirement is a reliable and robust connectivity if you don't have a require a ro reliable and robust connectivity your entire uh, entire process or entire operations could be in jeopardy here uh, moving on from farms if you think about the benefits in construction and mining uh, when it comes to connectivity first of all every company in the world in construction is trying to optimize their cost everyone is trying to make sure that their processes are as efficient as they can be and wireless technology brings a good solution to this because you can connect multiple phones that you have you can deploy tablets you can put, deploy tablets on equipments and take the data back so make sure that you're planning right you are implementing things based on your plan so you are optimizing your costs in that way you can have in rental equipment come in at the right time go out at the right time your costs need to be optimized and then as we have come out of covid and the pandemic everyone is struggling with uh, labor shortages and labor costs have gone up. So you need to plan your workforce at the same time in efficient manners and have a connected workforce so that they exactly everyone knows what they're doing. So there are a lot of solutions that offer this type of applications, but we have to remember that the backbone of all the solutions is wireless connectivity, which ends up improving productivity and improving profit margins, but at the same time, it helps improving worker safety and in the long run gives better environmental sustainability. So the benefits are huge. And when you think about a connected site itself, most of the time you would be in uh, urban environments, in semi-urban environments, or maybe you are in rural environments. For the first two cases where you are in urban or semi-urban, you have so many devices talking to each other, M2M communication going on between equipment. Most of the time you're feeding off of the cellular network but still sometimes the cellular network itself has different issues. You could have interference going on in the cellular network if you're in an urban environment. Interference is a very common problem that any cellular network inter uh, experiences. So your, your connectivity could be at risk there because if you are inter having interference, that becomes a risk. When you go to the rural environments, you might not have complete cellular connectivity as we discussed in the farm cases where not all rural environments are made equal and have broadband connectivity. So think about all the devices, all the equipment, all the human workforce that's coming and the needs of connecting all those devices together and choosing the right technology uh, makes a uh, makes a big decision maker and a big differentiator in this in this type of environment. And if you extrapolate this case, which is very similar to construction to mining, then we start thinking about, you know, in mining, a level of uh, complexity increases because you are doing underground construction. While you might not have interference in underground construction, but safety becomes the biggest 
the biggest controller and the biggest driver when you're going to mining. So you have you need your workers to be connected. You need your a, a safe underground network. And these underground networks are also talking to offices and above ground uh, offices and equipment. So all this combined uh, may, requires that wireless connectivity is provided in the right manner and the uh, right way. So this is what is driving wireless connectivity right now in these three fields. Now let's start looking into some use cases uh, of wireless connectivity that we have. So uh, I'll go into details of few of them. I don't have a use case for all of them, but think about all the different use cases. For example, uh, platooning where autonomous vehicles are driving, a group of vehicles are driving together autonomously. You need accurate information sharing between these vehicles so that uh, the entire orchestration is happening in the right manner. Uh, camera sharing is another example and we'll talk a little bit about it. You have uh, data exchange going on between this machine to machine communication and then uh, autonomy and connected sites and connected minds. So for all this, you need reliable solutions. We'll come to it how we as PCTEL uh, take a lot of pride in what we provide and bring to the market to make sure that we can we can meet the use cases and the requirements where they are needed to with our solutions. So first let's look at uh, the connected farm use case of machine to machine data with uh, process data exchange. So one of the use cases in process data exchange is uh, cover common coverage mapping. What, what do I mean by common coverage mapping? So imagine a farm which is as big as 445 acres, which is the average size of a farm in the US. Now you're not having only a single equipment doing harvesting or combining at the same time. So you are or seeding or spraying, whatever you're doing, you're doing with multiple vehicles at the same time. But how do you coordinate all these vehicles in real time that who's done what, who's doing what? So for that, you have common coverage mapping, which is a huge uh, use case for this type of connection. So you have all these devices and equipment talking to each other that, hey, I am finished this part of the farm, which might be on the upper eastern side or western side of the farm, and someone else might be doing another part of the farm. And the, most of these tractors and equipments today have screens on them, which can show the user or the operator in real time that what does the other operator finish? In that sense, you are now efficiently managing who's doing what part and you're not repeating work because repeating work not only uh, wastes time but could be an issue in a farming environment so you are talking to each other and this can be achieved with infrastructureless device uh, deployments where you could be using technologies like wi-fi uh, where different uh, machines are mounted with wi-fi access points or routers and they're talking to each other and managing this entire process and doing this entire orchestration together so when you look about the challenge that you have for this, you need low latency. You need accurate and precise GPS locations. Uh, you need communications between these vehicles to be secure and robust because if a vehicle comes out and goes into the farm, you need to know which vehicle is still working, which vehicle is not working so that you, you can cover the remaining part of the thing. So you know what's going on exactly. And you need to communicate with the multiple vehicles and probably need to communicate if required to a remote location as well. Uh, so the solution requires equipment that can provide this type of uh, robust connectivity uh, on in real time. So maybe a high power Wi-Fi access points or routers that are required for you. Then people all sometimes forget that you might have the best equipment, but you don't have the right accessories to support it, like antennas, which have the right gains and the right profile, then you still might not get the right coverage and uh, reliability that you need. So antennas make a big difference. And then you need accurate GPS antennas uh, for tracking where you are in such, where like if you are in a bigger farm, which is half a million acres, <laughs> which could be around 60 square miles, uh, then you need to know which equipment is where and exactly who's doing what. So all this combined is very paramount. So we have to keep in mind that we have to choose the right equipment to optimize our wireless connectivity. Uh, one of the other use cases could be parallel platooning. And what do I mean by parallel platooning? It's like one group of vehicle is working together where a tractor is going and it has a plow or a harvester behind a combine behind it and it's collecting all the um, crops but it completes uh, it, it's loaded then the next one comes in 
And this is a case of a single equipment and a single equipment talking to a multiple equipments and doing platooning. So a group of vehicles working together. But at the same time, if you extrapolate and the size of the farms, you need multiple vehicles. You are doing this at the same time. So then your use case uh, goes beyond a single vehicle and you still need these vehicles to talk not only to the vehicles in their group, but the other group and form a bigger group that way, if, if that makes uh, any sense. But so you then have a lot of intercommunication going on between these vehicles and for this again what are the challenges that you need you need average distance communication which would be low low uh, somewhere in the vicinity or somewhere far away again you need accurate data mapping you need that uh, communications real time and fast so your latency has to be low uh, so again you could be using cellular devices or wi-fi devices but depending on if you're choosing a farm and trying to do a cellular communication then first thing you need to make sure you need to make sure you have ample coverage across these farms so which is not always the case and that is why uh, the justification for the 2018 senate law uh, bill passed that asking for ample coverage across uh, rural environments. So we have to keep this in mind. Uh, next could be a heavy data usage uh, scenario where you are where you need a lot of bandwidth because you are sharing streaming your live location information along with video, uh, not only from your tractor or a implement that's attached to the tractor, but across machines and streaming it back to someone who's remotely observing this, this requires a high bandwidth, low latency communication so that you know in real time what each of this equipment is seeing. So you need, and in this case, you need backhaul technologies as well if you're connecting it back to the, uh, to the end, to a remote lock office so this might be a combination of networks that you're using and this could be again wi-fi and cellular combination or in previous cases if you want long distance you can use uh, lora communication as well so all this makes we have to be very cognizant of the fact that the devices that you use you need to implement them right you have to have the right safety within this devices and when i mean safety it's not about the worker safety but you don't want someone to hack into your uh, your devices and start uh, mismanaging it so that is also a very important point from a safety point of view so always keep this in mind and then the last case we discuss a briefly about a connected site you might be in a mostly in an urban semi-urban environment so you might be relying on cellular or when it comes to mining you could be using 5g or wi-fi but again you need to make sure that you have tested your environment right you have tested your uh, environment to make sure that the devices that you choose or the network that you choose provides things that you need so these are some common use cases. And of course, this is a very small subset of the amount of use cases that we can see that happen in the in the industry. I've not even touched on use cases uh, about sensing, uh, capturing sensor data from multiple locations and sending that back. So that is also a paramount use case. So in all this, how does PCTEL uh, help out? So we, we optimize connectivity. We help in verify connect and sense. So what do I mean by verify? So PCTEL has test and measurement equipment, uh, which can go from, um, which covers from 10 megahertz to eight gigahertz and also the millimeter wave bands to complete not only all the, the FCC defined bands completely covering 5G, but also uh, Wi-Fi, NB-IoT, and we can measure what your real field looks like if you're doing deployments for, for using cellular you need to know what you're going to be using and you need to make sure that that is reliable enough in some cases you might want to use this equipment to see which is the right carrier that you need to use so that's where uh, our test and measurement solutions come in uh, then we connect these devices or the machine to machine equipment in the field uh, we provide connectivity solutions through our iiot devices like access points radio modules and even a sensors which have backhaul connectivity but at the same time we have a huge portfolio uh, of antennas that can uh, help you in all different types of implementation they could do multi-technology multi-band antennas uh, that you can connect and uh, have the appropriate gain so that you can combine all the data together uh, and have reliable and robust communication going on between the, the equipment in the field and then the third part of our portfolio is sensing so we have wireless sensors that you can put in the field that can cover cases like temperature pressure humidity 
vibration and a lot of other sensors uh, cases because you can connect the sensors to external sensors as well and uh, take the data back through Wi-Fi because you have uh, uh, take the data back through wireless connectivity because these sensors have multi sensor multi connectivity platform so we combine all this together for you and if you look at our solutions uh, we optimize this uh, wireless connectivity with not only GPS, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth antennas, our scanning receivers, our access points, radio modules, and we bring it all together. So at the end, what I want to conclude here is that whenever you choose your wireless network, it is driven by three or more, four major factors. First, uh, and these factors determine what is the network type you choose, and what is the network equipment you choose and how you deploy it. These factors are what type of coverage you need, how far do you want to cover, what type of quality you need of this wireless connectivity. And when I say quality, it's about send, able to pick up signals uh, from far away or, or, or a ability to provide high bandwidth solutions, high bandwidth signals. So what type of quality that you need in this field? And then the third part is what is the security that you need, the safety so that no one is able to hack into your system. So it's it, it if you can visualize and imagine, it's like a triangle and you there's always something to give when you have to choose between technologies. And we have a wide array of technologies available to us now. We have Wi-Fi, which has been reliable and Wi-Fi is progressing not only from Wi-Fi 802.11 AC going on to AX and 7, uh, which covers more different business uh, use cases with higher bandwidths. Then you have cellular technologies, which is moving on a parallel track with 4G and 5G. You have long distance uh, technologies like Aurora, uh, that you can use in your sub one gigahertz band to provide uh, long distance connectivity. You have technologies which use C2, V2X where you have vehicles communicating with other equipment and the network. You have technologies like 802.11p. So the amount of technologies available to us is vast and wide. We need to be able to make the right decisions and to make the right decisions, you need to test, you need to verify first Think about your connectivity solutions and then uh, sense in a regular manner what's going on in your field. So with that, uh, I would like to conclude my presentation and uh, I thank everyone for joining us and I'll hand it uh, back to you, Maribeth, for if we have any questions. Yes, Chintan, thank you so much. So actually, yes, I saw a question come in the chat and I know we have time for a few questions. A question that uh, someone put in is for the three industries that you focused on, what distinguishes the choice of wireless technology for each one of them? Okay, so let's take one of each one of them by uh, one by one. So if you think about farms, farms are places where you have huge deployments. Uh, the coverage area that you need to cover is, is bigger and uh, you might not have um, reliable cellular connectivity throughout the farm. So in certain places you can use cellular for backhaul, but in this type of environment, you mostly will end up using something like a Wi-Fi, which is reliable, secure, uh, and you'll use that to connect your data back, which could be a bigger use case because Wi-Fi bands are defined and the spectrums are defined pretty precisely. There could be some uh, unlicensed bands that you can use, but not in all situations because in certain regions of the world, you can use 802.11p, which is uses a 5.9 gigahertz band, but not in North America or the US where you can't use that. So uh, Wi-Fi probably becomes a technology of choice in farms. Uh, if you take the connected site, uh, your technology of choice, depending on the environment you are in. If you're in urban, semi-urban, you might have reliable cellular technology, but still, if you want the equipments to reliably talk to each other, it's always recommended to go the Wi-Fi route and have equipments talk to each other, but you still have cellular connectivity to back all the data. And connected mines uh, underground, you can use 5G, private 5G deployments, uh, or you can, uh, and then uh, take the data back up uh, through connected methods and take it back. So it all depends on what you want in each of these type of industry use cases. Some of them require high bandwidth as well. So cellular, if, if you require high bandwidth in connected site, cellular might not be enough. So again, you might need some other technologies to come in and provide you that bandwidth because you are then, uh, when, then you're talking to other equipment as well. So uh, that is what determines what you use, Maribeth. Excellent, thank you. And I think we have time for one more. 
Uh, on your last slide, you talked about sensing capabilities. Can you tell us a little bit more uh, specifically on your IoT sensing offer? Sure. So uh, PCTEL provides a wide range of sensing capabilities where we have uh, industrial sensors which can go in harsh environments um, uh, and have multiple sensors, multiple connectivity on board. And when I say multiple sensors, they can cover anything between uh, pressure, humidity, uh, and all those sensing require environments along with connectivity, which could be uh, cellular, Bluetooth, LoRa, you, the technology of your choice, and you can take the data back. Uh, so, and it, not only do you have onboard sensors, but it gives you ability to connect to external sensors as well. And you can take the data back from the external sensors too. Fantastic. So that concludes today's webinar. Hopefully you found that beneficial. Uh, and as I had mentioned previously, we will have this recorded version on PCTEL.com. So if you want to review that uh, at a, another time, please visit our website. Thank you all for attending today.